BioFi team from Pinavon. All right, let's get it. All right, guys, I want to welcome everybody to another Cryptoners AMA. We're here with the uh, BioFi team from Finavon. Um, this is a very exciting project. These guys have been working on this project for a very long time. Uh, and we're very excited to kind of learn learn more about what the project is and the updates these guys have for, you know, the last maybe six months since I last talked to them. I'm um, here with Scott, who is uh, my main man. He always does AMAs with me. Um, Scott, do you want to say hello? What's going on, guys? Glad to be here. Looking forward to hearing about your project. Awesome. Uh, and then how's uh, it going? Thanks. I'll turn it over to you guys. Uh, Dwyer, I, who who wants to start? Cody or or Finavon or is it is it Brian? It's Brian, right? Yeah, Brian's back there. We can let him Brian. kick it off. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Introduce yourself. Uh, who you are? Maybe a little bit about your experience and uh, you know a little bit about the project that you guys are, are working on. Yeah, Robert. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brian Ma here, CEO of Finavon. And just a, a quick uh, shout out to your community. You have a fantastic community. Um, we are just so impressed with you guys. We did a, a quick AMA with you in the past and it was just fantastic. Thank we you, really, Brian. Really appreciate that. Um, and today's session means a lot to us. Uh, we are literally just rounding the corner and uh, we see the finish line here for launching BioFi in the market. So I'll talk a, a little bit about the project, a little, little bit about the token, and then turn it over to uh, the other executives on the team here. That sounds great, Brian. Go for it. So as far as the BioFi project, uh, one thing I'd like to highlight here is that this is a utility token. It's also a secure set of solutions that's developed by Finovant. We leverage the blockchain and decentralized Web 3.0 services. What's amazing about the ecosystem is that all the participants have to utilize the BioFi token. And the amazing thing is it only takes one BioFi token to be a member of the ecosystem, just one. It's important to point out that we will never sell your personal data or intrude on anyone's privacy. And I think this is an incredible and important thing to point out. BioFi solutions work for any person in any country. And this is available through an online ecosystem. It's amazing that there's unlimited potential for every company to join the BioFi ecosystem, the token. And this is why we say this is truly regenerative tokenomics. So one of the things that we'd like you guys to do is check out the white paper, check out the three pager, the one pager, and the websites. So we have two primary websites. One is the company at finovant.com. We can put that in the chat. And then the other is the community website at biometricfinancial.org. What I'd like to highlight here is that we've already got products in market. So a lot of projects that come through have great ideas. They have great innovations but they have yet to develop a product. We have several products in progress of being built over the last five years, currently in market with tens of thousands of customers globally. And that includes the Cryptic Wallet, which you can access on the Apple and Google app stores, the Governor Dow Proof of Existence product, uh, UniSafeBox, our password manager, which we are about ready to launch and market, and the Phoenix X1 blockchain phone, which is an amazing set of technology. That will also be a node phone on the Constellation network. So I think one thing you'll find from this conversation today is that BioFi is an amazing utility token. And in fact, it has incredible value. 
and the potential to greatly improve personal data security throughout the world. I'll turn it over to my colleagues and look forward to your questions. Well spoken, Brian. Really well spoken, man. Great, great, great layout for that. Um, Cody, you up, man? Uh, yeah, sure. I can go next here. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Cody Dyer. I am the CSO over here at Finovant. I've been working with these guys over here for about a year. Um, so like, like Brian was saying, uh, it's not, not just a product that, you know, quickly came together, threw things into them, you know, threw things together and trying to launch with a token behind it to build for, you know, funding for things for later. You know, this is pretty much predominantly already on the back, done on the back end. Uh, these guys had already been working on the biometric software before I even showed up. Um, you know, th that was already done when I got here. Um, I, they actually found me through, uh, I was one of the founders on Governor Dow. I'm actually the original author for the proof of existence uh, token or uh, the uh, originally written as a proof of existence NFT. Uh, so this is now to actually uh, hash your biometrics uh, into a unique token that is paired with your wallet address that proves you to be anonymous yet unique at the same time. Uh, so this is, you know, an entire new uh, revolution of uh, connecting biometrics with the blockchain and uh, through through the decentralization of you know, Web3. Uh, and then the Finavant Statec, uh, we were able to, you know, pioneer a new, a new form of uh, a non-invasive KYC that I, I truly believe is rev uh, revolutionary. And uh, that in included with all the other types of products we have, um, you know, just, uh, just the start of something beautiful. So now we can kick it, uh, kick it over here to Chris. Yeah, Thanks, Cody. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Robert, my name is Chris Benedict. Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I lead the sales and partnership efforts at Finavon. We call me, uh, I'm called the chief revenue officer. So if it, it touches revenue, I, I have something to do with it. Uh, personally, I have decades in the financial services industry and bringing innovations and new, new products to the market. And similar to me, you know, the founders and our advisors have a deep experience in some of the largest and best known technology companies uh, in the world. You know, we come from companies like Visa, MasterCard, IBM, Citibank. Um, so we've been in this service, uh, excuse me, in this sector for a really long time. And our backgrounds are in, in protecting and securing financial transactions. So this is right up our alley. And when we, when we talk about Finovant, Finovant's core business is in biometric authentication. So when you bring biometric authentication to things that are really important to all of us, the people, you know, securing my information, securing my transactions, making sure that, you know, even if someone has my password or has my account number, they can't get into my my personal information just be, because they don't have my biometrics. And I'm sure we're, we'll talk a little bit more about biometrics as we go forward today. So uh, really glad to be here, really glad to talk about the technology and to talk about BioFi and how everybody can uh, learn more and uh, and participate. So thanks, thanks for having us. Great, and I wanna point out, like we, we bring in a lot of new projects into the community, right? Where the teams are just getting started. They really have not yet built out uh, a ton of things. And I just wanna point out that this is not that guys. These guys have been working on this for several years. Uh, they have like what they said seven products that they've already brought to market they have a huge user base um, this is a very serious team with very big ideas and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be speaking with you guys again um let's let's talk a little bit more about you know the, the biometric identity and how that's how that's working so like who is your typical use user for this is this kind of like me or is this for businesses i mean who is your who's your target goal for for end users yeah Okay, I'll jump in on that one if I if I could. And Brian and, and Cody, please just jump in and, and add any commentary to it. Um, that That's a great question. And biometrics really are for everyone. You know, we started as a B2B company and bringing those solutions to the to the business community to implement implement for their customer basis. If you look at any of the, uh, the research out there on identity fraud, um, it just continues to rise. Uh, Passwords, logons and passwords are, are um, very insecure and hackers through social engineering and, and data, database breaches and so forth can get in there very easily. So we originally went, we were a B2B company because they, they have the technology that can get pushed out. 
So take your online banking app as an example. We can add Satec in there and boom, you guys are good to go. You know, the consumers are good to go through the link to their existing provider. And there's a couple of solutions that we'll talk about. We have on-device solutions, we have um, uh, web solutions, we have cloud solutions. So there's, there's applicability. We like to say that it has virtually unlimited use cases and we believe that. If you think about in any place you secure information or secure data, we can put a, we can secure that front door, that access with biometric. And, and you know, what is, what is Web3 if not the revolution of what B2B means? You know, and being able to provide that, that solid foundation for you to be able to grow yourself. I mean, many of us here, I'm sure we treat ourselves as a business and our habits and then our organizations, our networks are only scales and bulkings of that. You know, so being able to provide that foundation and then being able to help you scale as an individual is totally the goal. No, that, that's great, guys. That, that, that's pretty awesome. Um, I, have, I have a couple of questions, and I know Scott has some questions too, but um, your, your goals seem to resolve around integrating biometric security into Web3 and DeFi. Uh, as an overreaching goal, are you focused on providing end users with met methods to biometrically secure their own data, or is this focused on providing companies with solutions to vet their users biometrically? Um, are you guys trying to pursue both, or is it more one side or the other? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, kind of what we've been entailing is, is both uh, securing B2B providers to bolster our ecosystem of unique users and then providing that, that broad, resistant foundation for users and providers to grow. It's something like, you know, like 25% of all traffic on the Internet is malicious bots. You know, so if you can immediately start your network, you know, say, say hypothetically, you know, you were the, the Constellation network and you had each one of your uh, nodes acting as, you know, biometrically verified nodes, you would guarantee that 25% of the traffic on the Internet or, or your Internet is now, uh, is, uh, you know, or that is not malicious. So, you know, that 75% is now your 100 cap and you're not necessarily dealing with all those extra issues. And that's something that's huge in, you know, all industries, uh, you know, it's not something that's you know, lacking in insurances or, you know, any, anything like that. So you, you see that across the board. So if we can immediately, you know, bring an ecosystem that solves for that, you know, um, I think that that is, you know, that, that's as good as gold. That's more important than whatever the value on it is. No, I, I agree with you, man. Um, you know, uh, and I have another question. I, I want to know why you guys chose DAG, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, will applications for the biometric data security be focused on your own devices, as in, you know, the Phoenix X1, Cryptic Oasis Wallet, or are you guys intending to incorporate uh, these features with other Android and, and uh, iPhone devices? Yeah, in fact, this is a great question, Robert. Uh, yes, well, so this is something that, you know, we can actually... Oh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, th this, this is actually a, a great question, Robert. I think... Um, from a perspective of having um, different devices, different applications, the technology itself is designed to be cross-platform. It's designed to be integrated quickly and efficiently from anybody who acquires it, anybody who accesses it. So for example, on the portal, uh, which we'll be opening up here shortly uh, for rewards and perks. On the portal, there'll be a very easy way for companies to access the API. And the API comes in three formats, standard web, web 3.0, and on device. And so every company that interfaces with the ecosystem will be able to download these APIs and quickly integrate them. So those applications will now be oh. available on the front page of biometricfinancial.org. They'll be included in a flip box, just like a selecting from an a la carte menu. People will be able to come into the ecosystem look at a product they want to interact with. It could be the Phoenix X1, it could be Governor Dow, it could be CyberLeak Gaming, all kinds of things. They'll be able to come in and access these services, these products, quickly and easily from the portal, from the ecosystem. So that security across devices and across applications 
has been done in a way that it's easy to implement, easy to interface with the ecosystem, and provides utility to anybody that comes in and uses it. And we're there to, to support it, we're there to help the ecosystem, but the ecosystem itself is designed to run on its own as a utility. And the providers that come in and take advantage of it can easily join up, add their products into the flip boxes, and make them available to the community. So it's great utility in a simple to use format. Brian, what you just described is, is, is truly, uh, truly amazing. You guys have made it seamlessly easy for companies to come to you and add this. So, so if I'm a new company and I want to add, you know, some, some biofi technology to, to my, to my application or to my phones or whatever it is, how long is that setup process? How long would that take for a new on board to come on and actually start protecting themselves with, with everything that you guys yeah, offer? Yeah, that's a, that's a great follow-up question. Um, from the web and the web 3.0 perspective, that integration can happen in an hour, 30 minutes. It's wow. very, very quick wow. and very, very simple. Uh, the on-device is a little bit more involving because you have libraries that you need to download to the phone. This is completely decentralized. So in the case of your mobile devices, all of the data is stored on the device itself. It never leaves the device. Uh, very securely, and this is a important point between a non-device and a web and a web 3.0. In all cases, these are all decentralized, and the only time that your data would ever be uh, utilized by a company may be in the case of a standard web, like let's say Bank of America decided to put their online application into BioFi, and they wanted to make the login work for the bank. In that particular case, you may have a bank account assigned to you, just like you do today, for a login. Outside of something like that, everything is decentralized, 100%. And it's an amazing technology that will help so many people secure their data, secure their identity, and remain anonymous. And that is why this is so popular. You guys have, you guys have really built an, an imp impressive suite of, of products. Um, why, why did you guys choose, or why are you guys choosing the DAG ecosystem? Because I, I the, the best sites to see in crypto once DAG at mainnet 2.0 goes live, I, I think it's going to just be an incredible ecosystem. And I, I applaud you guys. You know, I, I see the, you know, the Air Force, the DOD, the, par the partnerships being made there, uh, you know, Space Isaac and all these, uh, you know, private, private, you know, you know military slash companies. Uh, and I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunity for your guys' technology to work with some of that stuff. So I, I'm very eager to see how this kind of plays out. Um, Scott, did you want to ask a couple questions, my friend, and get you in? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Hey guys, so <clears throat> can you uh, can you talk to us about uh, the Phoenix One phone? Like, why why would someone want to use that product over, say, a Samsung phone or an Apple phone or whatever like that? Because, like, for me, I've had I'm I'm kind of a creature of habit, and I've had a Samsung phone for Jeepers for since basically they came out. Um, so why? What would be the benefit of me switching from the Samsung to your guys' phone? Like, I, I know you guys, Samsung I think, are pay built you. on... <laughs> Say that again? I said, does your Samsung pay you? <laughs> well, that depends. <laughs> yeah, true, right. Um, I, well, I think uh, if you want to, if Chris, if you want to break down uh, the Phoenix for, for a minute, like the, the dual SIMs. Yeah. Yeah, happy to. Well, first thing about the Phoenix X1 is that um, it's it's on an Android platform, uh, Android operating system, um, but it's got basically two sides to it that that don't speak to each other, right? And it's got two SIM cards. So the 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 easiest thing or the the convenience in that is that you can have two separate lines on the phone. Well, okay, that maybe that's not the most unique thing out there, but you could have your business and your personal line on there if you'd like. What really makes it unique is that those sides are indeed separate and you need to use your biometrics to get from one side to the other. So we, we 
talk about it as a public side and a private side. So as an example, on your on your public or personal side, you could have all your apps, you know, your social media apps, so on and so forth on there that you use today. If you want more security, we have a um, additional security chip on the other side, and I'm using air quotes, you can't see me on the other side of the phone, we have um, more, we have an additional security chip that you can switch over to. And on that side, it can be used for a lot of secure applications. It can be used for secure VPNs for a business. It can also be a place to store all your sensitive data, all your crypto wallet information, seed phrases, so on and so forth, because no one can get access to that side of the phone without your biometrics. So that's an on-device solution, but it's it's solid, you know, you can't get okay. in there uh, without without the biometrics. Okay. So that's the, the, the initial features, but just to, to round out what Cody was saying earlier, we are we are in the engineering phase right now on the Phoenix X1. On the next version of that, which we're going to be bringing to market sometime next year um, as a node device, as a node processing device. So that's okay. another reason why it's different than a Samsung or anything else out there. You're going to be able to do node processing through on Constellation through their proof of reputable observation, and you're going to be able to, you know, earn benefits by doing that. So, yeah, so the goal would be to make a, you know, as ever sitting in this, this Web3 world, we're all engaged right now online through our portals, and being able to set you with your secure portal that has your on, you know, on your, your on device metrics, uh, it's compound, you know, you're able to compound, oh, co compound between your resources, and as well as uh, acting as a, uh, a data, you know, uh, a validator endpoint so it would work as uh, soft uh, similar to a soft staking method uh, because uh, be prior to the the phone being live there is uh, there is the in intention of having the trading uh, uh, or excuse me this the the node phones available or a pro a similar process for you to be compounding your resources earlier on before the phone is actually live like a like a pre you know pre phone phase um, but having that that endpoint that endpoint validator or being able to act as a proof of you know a proof of reputable observ observation mechanism, uh, so how I imagine these things in a similar uh, similar situation to uh, what's going on with Door hand in hand with something like Door, so we're in conversations uh, with you know Konami over there uh, from one of their partners and they're working on or in conversation with something uh, about uh, they're trying to incentivize or there's you know a government. Uh, in question, uh, they're trying to get uh, incentivization for public transportation. So now, acting in, uh, let's say, in New York City, you have your bus grid. So they're trying to uh, say, okay, maybe, you know, if this is better for you to take public transportation, we'll incentivize you to take the bus. Or this time of day, we might, you know, it's crowded, we might incentivize you to take the train. So now acting with, the, like, say, the, the door node authenticators acting as the bus terminals or the buses themselves or acting as the train themselves, and then every single individual node phone that enters that network is now another validator that's confirming through the mechanisms of uh, the validator mechanisms as they reach points and pro and checks the checkpoints and milestones. And you know this I am a node thing is is truly the truly the future. I believe that uh, we are acting as nodes in a giant societal ecosystem. And if we can have these uh, these endpoint propositions of our value, you know, our value creators. You know, I'm on my phone all, all day long. I'm on my phone for, you know, eight, 10 hours a day plus, you know, so it's like, this is me acting in my node, you know, creating value to a degree. And it might not, I might, I'm definitely not getting all my value. So something I did with Governor Dow, um, I wrote a, a proposal for uh, a data aggregation article when I was learning about Facebook, you know, earning like $150 a year per user. When it turns out that your health records are actually worth a couple thousand dollars per year, you know, and you're not getting that anyway. So that was something that Ocean had recognized with our data ag aggregation for on-device mechanisms, and they actually granted uh, or gave us a grant over there. But that was something that's underdeveloped in the data economy currently on chain. But I believe in the future that you know the data economy is is, is going to be massive. So as the endpoint validators, you know this phone, uh, and then subsequent versions, well, you know I believe to be like the holy grail of your data procurement and you know value cr creation and your security at the same time. And and yeah. all this data, right, is stored on your phone. It's not stored in in in, in a big, you know, farm or something like not that. Not a bin. I don't have no any of your data. Just... I don't even want it. <laughs> Which is the no, difference so between like Apple. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, all this other biometrics. So that's where the whole market's been trending, right? Everybody's, you know, doing some sort of KYC with your biometrics or this, that, and the other. And they're all like, oh, we'll just do on device KYC. We don't care. That's not our business. But when Apple's actually collecting all that stuff or, you know, you don't even know what, you know, so we don't, we don't, we want to make sure that we have that clear difference between what big data is doing with your data and what we're trying to help you do with earning value for your data, because you are value just for existing. And we want to help you keep that in your pocket. So all of that um, biometric stuff is stored in your phone. It's not kept offshore in a data server or anything like that. Or... Yeah, that that's absolutely that's, that's, ab that's absolutely correct. So the way that the the phone works is that it has a very critical several layers of technology. Um, this is a this is a okay. um, this this particular device has had ten million dollars of investment uh, to get it to where it is in terms of the capability and the security and ensuring that nobody can gain access to your personal and private information. So it is a it's gotcha. What's the what's the price point going to be? Uh, we're shooting for that eight hundred dollar range, um, right? Right now, oh, the, okay. the phone itself is um, in a, uh, a re-engineering uh, effort to upgrade it to the latest Qualcomm 5G chip, uh, which requires just a slight difference in the form factor of the device. Uh, and then there's also the battery. With 5G, you've got a lot more content of information that you can stream. Uh, which requires a little bit more battery to keep up with that. Uh, so we're re-engineering it to increase the battery capacity and at the same time upgrading the communication to 5G. Gotcha. So, so the, the goal for those phones would be like with your coverages, the same way, you know, the same way that uh, the insurance type situations would work. So we're living, you know, we're we're living in a time you know, it's on chain with our value propositions of being you know, either collateralized, under collateralized or over collateralized. Right. And that's basically on chain how we're seen. So if you're able to have your products and services and you're able to have your, 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 your devices or your traditionally when you're paying for your phone coverages, you know, that just goes into a black hole. Right. Or traditionally when you're paying for your insurances, that goes into a black hole. So now if you can provide, you know, a, a reward structure for you to collateralize your phone service and for that to come out of your, your reward structure to where you're now either or for your insurance as well, you're either collateralized for the coverage, you're over collateralized where it's paid out of, you know, it's, it's covered, totally uh, paid up or you're under collateralized where it comes out of pocket. So that's type of the type of direction we want to kind of aim for how we're totally seeing products on chain. And as we're creating these, you know, these uh, the NFTs of these, these services and uh, digital property uh, as NFTs and what people are actually seeing for the metaverse, like being able to actually, you know, buy the NFT of a product and seeing it in your, you know, your collection in a metaverse, et cetera. You know, that's totally the, the direction everything's heading. And we want to be right on the forefront of that position properly. Absolutely. Um... So if I were to buy one of these phones when it releases sometime next year, whenever you guys actually release it, is can I connect it to my current phone provider or is there going to be something special that I have to yeah, do? Yeah, th this, in fact, is a great question. Um, so we have a, a contract uh, right now with Verizon. Verizon is the only telco in the United States that has a separate certification process independent from AT&T and the others. So they require a little bit more handholding, a little bit more, um, you know, teamwork to be able to get through their certification process. So in preparation for that, we've already sent them one of our phones. We've got uh, a bunch of meetings and put a, a contract in place getting ready for this upcoming series of events. And they will certify the Phoenix X1 um, in a timeline that we work on together. Uh, to release it at the same time it's available across all the other telco yeah. providers. Now the gotcha. Hold on, so, Brian. Can I ask you? Is it? Are you going to be able to buy this in Verizon stores? Yeah, that's the goal. So the goal would be that they would have this available as a product 
either in one of their pop-up wow. stores or you'd have it on the website um, as part of their certification process you actually sign a it, it takes months to negotiate this contract by the way you have to to work through a contract um, work out the details of how you're going to certify it together then you can put their their images their marks on your website uh, as a partner and then you work with them to you know release it in the market um, now they also have an affinity towards the biometrics so they in particular have because they have a lot of sales agents out in these pop-up stores um, they're also interested in helping to bring the biometrics to market by offering those to customers that come into their booths and so forth so you may have a small business, you may have somebody who's interested in the biometrics. They could show that customer how it works on the device, and then independently of selling the actual form factor, the phone, they could actually you know, go to the website, sign up for BioFi, and become part of the ecosystem, and take advantage of the biometrics and put their company on there. So it's, it actually serves a dual purpose. Interesting. Um, so what happens, so all of my information is stored in that phone right there. So what happens if I drop the phone on a toilet, my kids smash it, I lose it, someone steals it, like what happens to that information? Is that safe? Or like, how do I, what, what happens when that happens? If yeah, a how do you get the information gone? back? I guess, right? Well, yeah. it's, it's like any it's like any physical device you have today. So in in the case of your wallets, so one one thing I want to highlight is we we talked we started this conversation. We talked about some of our products in market. Um, one of the products we have is called Uni Safe Box. So Uni Safe Box is a uh, a password manager. It's a data manager, which runs independent of anything else that you have going today. It's, it uses a blockchain. And it has biometrics, and in there you can store your seed phrases. So the idea is that if you have a physical device, and that physical device is damaged, or you know you drop it into a, a cauldron and it starts to burn up and it's gone, um, you don't want that devi that device to be the only place you have your seed phrases. Because who can remember those things? But Uni Safe Box is a software product. It's an app that you can run anywhere. And it's using the blockchain. And you can actually load that up and use your biometrics and recreate all of your seed phrases if your phone, your physical device, is destroyed. So we have a very easy way for you to get back up and running with your wallets. Gotcha. OK. So <clears throat> what? Um, like, so moving on from the phone, like, let's talk about the password manager for a minute. Like, is there anything in place to, if you guys were to say get hacked or something like that, or if something were to happen, is there something in place, some kind of protocol in place to where you guys are like locked down and then that can't? Or is that also just stored on your individual device? Um, that is using a blockchain format, uh, which is encrypted okay. so that um, it is not accessible to anybody. Um, and the beauty of that is you could be anywhere in the world. You could be on, on any device. You could be in any location. And using your biometrics through this product, you can access your personal information. Uh, in there, you can store things like documents. You know, if you're buying something and you have a physical document you need to, to reproduce, uh, it could be even your passport image or things that you need to, to rent a vehicle at another country. Um, all these things that make life easy when you're traveling or you're trying to conduct business or doing anything around the globe, um, that's why you would have this kind of a product. And it is strictly blockchain enabled and yeah. biometrics enabled. We also have a, a pattern as another backup for validation when you're logging in. So it's these are all very carefully secured. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so with I was looking at your white paper last night and looking at the few things mm -hmm. that you have outlined in there. You know the. The password manager, the phone, the wallet, um, and then what was the other one? Uh, 
I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Um, the SayTech, the API. So uh, out of those four things that I saw in there, like you guys mentioned that in 20, 2020, the the um, the market statistic was like 20 billion or something like that. And by 2027, it was going to go up to over $82 billion. Like, what are you guys going to do to keep pushing forward to be a leader in that space to make sure you guys have your own little niche? Like you guys have plans, I'm assuming, for future yeah, things, that, correct? Yeah, that's a fantastic question and and a detailed one. I, I think, you know, it's quite interesting. You look at a company like Nuance, uh, which was purchased um, by Microsoft for, it was either 13 or $16 billion. And that's one company that plays in this space. They do not do what we do. They have a different approach. And you can just start to get a sense for how big this space is. And the fact that we have so many companies coming into the ecosystem now, lining up to use these services, what makes it special is now there's a utility token. So when we think about anybody who interacts okay. with the ecosystem, it just takes one BioFi for anybody to interact with the ecosystem. And now a provider can come in and they can purchase BioFi at any level they want. They can then deposit it with us. While it's sitting there, they can earn rewards and perks. And then while they're integrating with the ecosystem and with other companies in the ecosystem, we can then draw from their account and pay for their services. And then those tokens are regenerated back into the supply. And then it's a very wonderful ecosystem where these tokens are continuously circulating between the customers, the providers, and BioFi. And so as we expand out into all the countries around the world, which outside of OFAC countries, this works everywhere. That's the beauty of it. It's not a US only solution. This thing goes anywhere in the globe. And all these providers can roll in and start using this technology and interfacing with it. And that ecosystem then builds as rapidly as a Solano or um, a Constellation or any of these companies that are just ready to uncoil and spring out and grow at these huge levels. You'll see this happen with the ecosystem as well. Don, did you have any more questions? What's that? Did you have any more questions? Um, I, I just had one more. I thought I thought you were going to say something, so I paused. No, no, go. Um, yeah, this is I I really like your guys' project. I like everything that you're trying to do, and I think this is going to be a really interesting one to watch and track. Um, my last question. So you've mentioned that you have um tens of thousands of users already within your ecosystem so what type of revenue are you guys already seeing within that ecosystem if you guys can share that i don't yeah, know if you that's can a not, great but... question so we have several revenue paths that are opened up and are opening up rapidly uh, on the cryptic wallet side what we've done is we've monetized the actual wallet to have a an advertising capability in the wallet so for example, if you have a new cryptocurrency that you're gonna launch, or you've got a DeFi project, or something that you're doing on the blockchain and you wanna get the word out, you can actually advertise within the cryptic wallet and we can sell that advertising to roll through at a week at a time. And we have about five slots that rotate. So when you're in the app itself, buying and selling and accessing different cryptocurrencies in a decentralized way, you'll be presented, you know, in a very nice and easy manner, these these ads that open up projects to you. They open up uh, concepts that companies want to get across and, and get your attention on. So we built that in a very nice and easy way into the app. The Cryptic Wallet itself, if, you're, if you have an Android device, um, we've set up a separate website so it's completely decentralized. So right now you can go to the Apple and the Google Play stores and you can download the cryptic wallet and load it onto your device and use it. If you want to stay completely incognito, 
you can go to a server that we've set up, cryptic.com, and you can download the APK file directly to your Android device. And that keeps you completely decentralized and anonymous. That's available. Hey, Brian, are, are you guys going to allow like trading inside of the wallet? Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, if I wanted to swap like ETH or something, are you guys going to be able to do that? I mean, that's just another way of giving, getting revenue too. I, I would, yeah, I would the think. wallet, it's, it's a very thoughtful question. The wallet itself is being designed as an exchange. So there's, there's a lot of neat features wow. that we have planned in there. One of our, um, one of our great partners is is GIFs with a Z on the end. GIFs out in Los Angeles, and uh, John, the CEO of GIFs, we've been working with him for the last couple of years. He's got a product that allows cash cards to be produced outside of a wallet. So, in other words, we can take a, a some cryptocurrency, <laughs> and convert that over to a cash card that you could then use like an, under a Visa logo as an example and go out and uh, electronically buy things online or what have you. Um, and this is the kind of thing, the kind of integration that will be an upcoming um, feature improvement in the wallet. And onboard, offboard capabilities? Yep, have the oh. onboard and offboard and then uh, yep. having the exchange capability built in after that feature. So there's a lot of great capability, a lot of great features that are coming up in the wallet itself. And this wallet would use the BioFi utility token as its token. So if people come in and they need to set up a liquidity pool or what have you, a BioFi could then play in that space and serve that purpose. So as far as growing the utility and expanding it, you've with that question, you've hit on one of the biggest um, and greatest impossible opportunities to generate huge volume for BioFi and for the ecosystem. It's incredible, man. You guys have so much going on. I mean, uh, you know, it, it was it was when I when I first saw this project. You know, I think we started talking. You know, four or five months ago. Uh, I, I knew this was this is something really incredible that you guys are building, but there's just so many other avenues you guys can now build out into this. Uh, I mean, uh, you guys just have so many different ways of creating new revenue, getting new customers, uh, you know, onboarding new people into the wallet or, you know, getting the phone. Is this a no? I mean, there's just so much here, guys. It's, it's really incredible. Is there anything else in the in the in the BioFi space that we have not touched on that you feel is not very important that we should know about? So, like, um, I, I really feel like, you know, what you're saying about, you know, there are so many things going on is right. And some people, when they start to hear about, oh, you have so many different things going on, they're like, why don't, you know, why don't you just focus on one thing? That's what we are. We're focusing on the biometrics and the systems integrations for verified data. And now watch what I can do with it all. Because there's just literally endless things that you can plug in, especially with the the, the Web3 Legos, as some, you know, the blockchain Legos, as some people call it. You can just plug and play. You know, and if now we're just adding, a, you know, simple lines and simple things like, you know, with Governor Dow and proof of existence, it's like you literally can add one line of code. You know, so these types of these types of developments and um, th it's 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 groundbreaking what we're doing. And it's almost it's almost like people don't understand it, especially like with the proof of existence, and things like that. It's like I was over there, like waving my arms, like jumping up and down, like and like thinking to myself, like, it was, this is my reason for existing. And it's like people are like, so what? What's civil resistance? I don't get it. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay, well, I guess you guys will catch up, right? Uh, but, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot that's gone into it, and we're really, we're really proud of what we got here, and you know, we're, we're proud to get this thing to market, and we're, we're proud of our team. No, that's great. I, I did have one, uh, maybe one or two other questions. Um, you know, in life, that you know, sometimes there's some people using, you know, BioFi or some apps that aren't using it in the legal fashion, right? There's, there's some criminals out there doing stuff. What happens when, uh, you know, the FBI or somebody shows up with a subpoena for somebody's information? How is that going to be handled? Um, you know, is that something where, hey, we, you know, the, the, the data is on the phone, we can't access it? Or is that something where you guys are going to have to comply? Can you walk us through kind of, I'm sure you guys have thought of this, uh, you know, what, what happens in that situation? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on that one if I can. Um, it's um, something in the DeFi space, it's something that everyone thinks of that at some point or another. But the answer is pretty simple. Uh, 
if it take the, the best thing I can do is give, give an example. Take the cryptic wallet as an example. Your biometrics reside on that phone. And if they came to us and said, we need somebody's biometrics, you say, well, we don't have it, right? We, we don't have it. We don't even know who they are, basically, because our interaction is through maybe a decentralized wallet. Yeah. You know, if we do a, um, if you enter the ecosystem and the only thing that ties you to your biometrics is your decentralized wallet. So if someone comes and says, you know, I need uh, Brian's, Brian's biometric, we, we don't even know where they are, right? Because we don't have Brian in the database. Brian doesn't exist there. Uh, there's a wallet that's got a biometric, a mathematical representation of someone's biometric signature, and that's it. So there's no way to tie it back to somebody. Now, just just to, to be clear, you know, we are a U.S. corporation, and if if the government comes to us or, you know, the law comes to us, we have to certainly comply. But in that specific, in that case, we don't have any information that's helpful to them. I mean, that, that's what people want to hear, though. At the end of the day, they want to know that their, their information is safe no matter what they do, I guess. And so uh, that, that, that's good to know that everything, you know, you guys don't hold any of the data. And so that, that's, that's nice. Um, what else is on the roadmap in the next six months? What are, what are you guys pushing for? What are you guys really trying to get to market right now? I mean, where, where do you guys see yourself in six months? One of the big things that I'd add on um, when you had asked about are there other things we need to talk about, it's really just a, an extension of partnerships. That's where our major focus is going to be uh, for the next six months. The technology builds are a little bit further out there when we talk about the Phoenix X1. So that's important. That's on our timeline. Uh, you know, Cody is leading efforts in the, um, in the insurance and in the potentially decentralized bond um, space. So there's a lot of efforts going around there, but they're a little bit longer term efforts. So right now we're focused on, you know, getting getting the ecosystem launched and finding partners who want to become part of that ecosystem. We've spent the time and bootstrapped our solution so far. We're not going out there with a token to raise money. That is not what we're doing. We built these solutions and they're going out the door. We built them out of our own pockets. So we now want to expand that. And although BioFi is going to launch with Denovant solutions, we expect in the next 6, 12, you know, 18 months, the ecosystem to really just grow. And we'll be a small player in that ecosystem. It'll be much, much bigger. We're all about other people securing their solutions with biometrics, um, protecting customer data, and bringing utility and solution into the ecosystem uh, and, and more solutions into the ecosystem space. But partnerships are probably key for us yeah, over and, the next six to 12 months. Do you have any partnerships yeah. in that you guys are trying to go after? I mean, I know you're working with Verizon already, but is there any other kind of big partnership that you know we, we should know about that you guys are working on? Yeah, we're working on a couple. Um, we're working on a couple that aren't public yet. We're working with one of the world's largest consulting firms to, to test biometric access for their single sign-ons for their their company, you know, their their uh, employees around the world. Wow. Uh, those are the kind of things we're working on. Like Brian mentioned and Cody mentioned, we have gifts out there. We're working on um, joint solutions with them. Um, I'm really excited about the micro bonds. Yeah, uh, and that one. That's big. Solutions. That's big. So there's a lot of big and smaller solutions out there um, that, that we're working on. You know, unfortunately, a lot of them are not public right now, but um, Suffice to say, there's there's no shortage of integration conversations going on and how we can bring biometrics. Yeah, and, and by the way, um, I would add to that uh, answer yeah. by just stating that um, you know one of the the big um, partnerships that we have, of course, is Constellation, and you guys were asking uh, about that earlier, and it's on our roadmap. Uh, one of the things that as Chris was stating, uh, the roadmap itself in the white paper uh, on the website, you'll see the roadmap in there. And um, it talks about integrating with Hypergraph and launching on Constellation. So all that's in there. And we're very proud of that partnership. Um, we've gone through their accelerator program and worked uh, closely with many people there and, and um, have a, just a great relationship with all kinds of people up and down the chain at Constellation. We really appreciate all the work they're doing in the market. Um, and to Chris's point, you guys will see a whole bunch of companies pouring in uh, that we're talking to now and that we'll be adding 
uh, images, you know, icons to the website, and then there'll be some press releases. Uh, I would say watch the press release circuit over the next uh, month and two months window. You'll see several press releases going out about partnerships. Uh, some that we can't announce here because uh, contracts are still in play. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a fantastic sure. question. And uh, for this, uh, for this yeah, audience, by the way, um, one of the things that I, I would throw out is uh, if there are uh, small companies, uh, medium-sized companies, large companies that are represented on this call, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We love to have conversations. We love to work with the community. If you guys have ideas on how to integrate into the ecosystem or products that you want to bring in there, um, we're actually in a huge marketing blitz. We didn't mention this on the call, but we're doing like two AMAs every day, just about maybe more uh, over this next month as we get ready to launch, because we really want to bring this story to as many people as oh. possible. And Robert, that is why we're so happy to be here as well, because you have such a great community. And helping get this message out is super helpful. Yeah. And uh, we really want to do the right thing for everybody and, and open up this opportunity, uh, get people in and, and help them to get into the ecosystem. Uh, so if anybody's interested, please reach out to us. Yeah, and Brian, what's the best way for someone to reach out to you? I, I'm sure they're, I'm going to get a couple DMs asking me that. Is that Twitter? Is that maybe an email address? What's that best way? Yeah, we've way? got, um, and we can put those in the chat. We've got a... a the uh, the websites that are great yep. uh, formats, the newsletter, Twitter, uh, Telegram, these channels are growing rapidly, mm -hmm. and we'll put all those in the chat. In, any one of those is great to reach yep. us. And then before I open up, I know there's a couple uh, questions from the audience, and I want to get those in. Um, uh, are you guys still kind of doing any kind of pre-sale raising funds or anything like that? Anyone, anyone here that needs to know about anything that oh, you yeah. guys are doing? Um, Chris was waiting for that question. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm sure he was. I, I wanted to save it to the end. So the people that really care are still here that want to know. So, uh, why don't you hit it with us, Chris? Thanks. So I'm glad you asked the question so I don't have to feel like a shameless pitch man, but, uh, that's just, <laughs> thank you for doing that. <laughs> Um, but just just for for um, a little bit of background, we we closed. Um, you know, we're all about. We are a U.S. corp, as I said before, and we have a U.S. Big, uh, our attorney is here in the U.S. Our, our multiple attorneys and have given us a utility letter. You know, here in the U.S., which we're very proud of. It's something that's uh, that's uh, not not easy to come by these days. So uh, we're we're our utility token project has gotten the seal of approval. So. We closed our accredited um, investor round back in January. And what we're now doing is we, we have what's called a Reg S offering, or very simply, what it means is we can take, um, we can take funding from folks who are non-US at this time. So if there are people in the community who are non-US citizens and are interested in exploring um, a, a direct investment in BioFi uh, or a direct backing, of BioFi, um, they can reach out to us. It's easy. It's BioFi at Finovant.com. Uh, we're we're look the the minimum is five thousand dollars and up. And if it was over a hundred thousand, we'd certainly do um, some some uh, beneficial rates for that person. But the rates people will get will be below the the launchpad rates that are going to begin on March 28th when we go out on the Latoken launchpad. So Great. very simply, if someone's interested, please email. It, it could be to my email, cbenedict at finovant.com, or easier than that is biofi at finovant.com. Let me know what your interest is, and we'll start a conversation. And then just for full disclosure, guys, uh, back in back in J December, January, uh, we had Finovant in for this, this U.S. investor round. I personally invested um, fifteen thousand uh, dollars because I truly believe in this team and this project, and so I just want to uh, full disclosure here that I definitely am uh, an early investor in this project, and I'm very thankful to have met this team and and uh, everybody here. Uh, Brian, did you oh, want to say I, something? I was just I, I knew Chris was was excited to take that question, and and thank you for that great question. I uh, if you've got a couple of questions from the audience, that'd be great. I do. King, what's up, my friend? You got a question for the team? Yeah, 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 I do. So you guys are saying that this device will only be accessed by the person who purchases it, correct? Are you talking about the Phoenix X1 device? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like any other phone, right? It's um, It's got the same uh, 
you use it like any other phone, but you can secure it with your biometrics. So yes, you are the only person who can access that device. Okay, so my concern was, you know, whenever stuff like this launches, you know, if this device is truly as secure as you say it is, won't it be adopted by terrorists and malicious people first and possibly garner a negative name? Um, well, you know, technology is what technology is. We are trying, we are putting a product out there for, um, for the individual to secure their information. Uh, I guess the unfortunate side effect of technology is that there are bad players out there who may adopt a new technology for nefarious purposes. Um, being a decentralized player and decentralized data focused, um, that's, you know, I don't know how we would control something like that or how we would prevent something like that um, with just a piece of technology. Now, certainly we'll apply, we will adhere to any sort of OFAC or um, anti-terrorism guidelines that, that are required. Um, but other than that, you know, we're in the same boat as every other technology company yeah, I, that's I, out there. I, I would add to that point right. that, you know, um, a lot of the, um, you know, the purchasing of, of devices that takes place, um, you know, there's, uh, there's always an, an interaction, as Chris is talking about. So um, I'm sure many of you guys have traveled outside the U.S. and purchased SIM cards in other countries and popped them in your phones. And, you know, you can do all kinds of things outside the U.S. that is different than you do here. Uh, so depending on the location and what people are trying to do, um, there's also other technologies that uh, countries have put in place outside of the physical device that kind of manage their infrastructures. Um, and that's a whole nother topic of security and, and data privacy and things that um, the device doesn't deal with, but you know, like a, uh, a state actor, a state sponsor might have something that's, you know, checking uh, through their telco channels that nobody has any control over. So just want to throw that out there. Um, that makes a whole lot of sense. I, I could see, I could see what you're saying there. Um, okay, and then my next question is, so it, let's say that, you know, um, some malicious people were caught using your devices. Let's say that, you know, there was some legislation passed that required some sort of KYC with each device or, or something like that. How would you handle that? I would think that that KYC would come from the, um, from the network provider, right? If we're selling through a channel uh, that, that, you know, people are. So uh, you just cut out on. Yeah, I think I think where Chris was heading with that answer is that, oh. um, especially in other countries, right? It used to be that you could just go and and pick up a, a SIM card at you know at the local Seven Eleven. Um, that has now changed. Um, in a lot of countries, there's a process that you have to go through to uh, to get a SIM and actually use it in a device. Um, and so there's, in the United States, you guys know what we do here. So it just depends on, on where the device is. Uh, there will be limitations on where we can sell it uh, because of the controls we have here in the United States, just like Apple has to deal with in the other companies. Okay, so do you think that you're gonna be making different devices it's required for different by regions? law, absolutely. So that would be a, a, a local, law in a country that would say, okay, this device has to be um, provided with a, you know, a special software to access it within this environment. Uh, that may be something that the telco has to provide. So if the device is shipped to a telco to sell in their stores in Dubai, for example, um, the government may require that device to be unpackaged and loaded with some software that they want on the device. We would have no control over that. I see. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you, King. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Cat Cat, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good, how are you guys? Great, great. What's your question? Yeah, um, I just want to say thanks, guys. Um, I'm an early investor, and I really appreciate every, you know, step that you're taking and the work that you're doing. Um, my question, since I asked, I think, when I first invested, um, was around competition in the space. Um, at that time, there was really nobody else. But I know recently, Jack Dorsey came out that he's kind of, you know, 
has to be waters in the space too. So can you address how you feel about the competition and, you know, going against Jack Dorsey? Uh, I think, um, and uh, were you specifically talking about um, which, which product was he touting? He's sorry. He's oh, going into yeah, the it doesn't surprise me. As well. I think a, a lot of you know we're out there in a pretty big way getting the word out in this last, I'd say, twelve month cycle, and and at a fever pitch right now because we're getting ready to go live. It takes a long time. It's taken five years to get us here, and a lot of money and a lot of effort, and you know many people on the team. Uh, so for him to try to to jump in and do something at a level that we've been able to accomplish, it just takes a long time. Any kind of a, a device, any kind of an interaction. Uh, it took a year and a half to design the Phoenix X1. Uh, by the way, on the name of the phone, uh, we started a conversation with a community to come up with a new name for it, considering that it's gonna be a, a node um, on the Constellation Network. If you guys have thoughts on that name, please share them out with us. We are more than happy to entertain those and we're gonna re-engage the community. We've pulled together a, a long list and we'll kind of pare that down and feed it back out to get more results. Uh, but that device is an example and the biometrics are things that are hard to duplicate. They're hard to figure out how to monetize those and make it easy for people to interact with. So he'll have a bit of a, a road ahead of him to try to get in this space. Hey, Brian, speaking of that real quick before Kat asks her next question or follow up, do you see you guys being bought out by a, a bigger, bigger player to just, you know, uh, get your get to, I mean, because you guys are so far, I, I mean, I haven't heard of too many bio, bio fire, uh, type of uh, biometric projects coming down the line. I'm sure there's a couple, but you guys seem to be uh, a little bit ahead of the curve here. Do you guys see a, a bigger player coming and, and trying to and scoop you guys up? I mean, is that is that kind of you guys thinking about that? Or, I mean, do you guys want to hold on to what you guys have built? A great or question. what do you guys we, we stand on that? We talk about this thing as being multi generational. And so that, you know, the, the, all the people that have invested in this and their kids can take it over. This is a multi decade long thing. The tokenomics are a 10 year emission schedule. And we view this thing as being multi-decade, multi-generational, because it's an ecosystem. And once the token starts to, you know, be regenerative, uh, many, many people in all these countries around the world will be interacting with the token. So it'll have its life cycle, it'll have its spike, it'll have its growth. And we want to see a beautiful chart, you know, not a sawtooth chart, but a nice beautiful chart emerge where this thing just grows over time and continue to add utility to this and build on it. And I think that's the best thing is just let it grow, let it do its thing. And we're here to, you know, to let the ship loose so that it can chart its course, but you guys will be very happy with this. Amazing, man. Uh, Kat, why don't you go ahead and uh, ask your second or follow up question. Sorry about that. I just want to grab uh, Chris from the audience real quick. Yeah, as soon as he raises his hand, I can bring him on. I messaged him already to try to do that. Thank you. Chris, <laughs> raise your hand, Chris. All right, Kat, go for it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so my second question is really in regards to the Phoenix phone. Um, what would you say that the power is comparable to as far as you know, some of the other validated in it? Um, I think I caught most of that question. Yeah, can you ask that one more time, Kat? Yeah, Kat, one more time, sorry. Um, in terms of processing power for the Phoenix phone, what would you say is comparable? I didn't get the last part of it. She said as far as oh, processing she's, power She's asking the phone, what the, the phone is comparable to processing power-wise. Yeah, same. Um, I, I think that question was, is how does the phone, is it powerful enough for a node? Yeah, you know, what's it comparatively uh, to the other yeah. phones in market? Um, and you know, the remake on that, the design is intended to be, you know, we're we're vastly ramping up the the capabilities, you know, trying to hook in the five G. Um, Sorry, I guess in terms of like the processing power, if if you're saying that it can be like a validator, right? So um, I guess. You know, maybe if you can talk to maybe what chains you think it can 
can process, right? As a validator node, because it's what, eight gigs, but Avalanche requires like a 16 gig processing memory. Well, the, the DAG, the DAG nodes already can work with a, a modern, the, the DAG soft nodes can already work or with the, or the light nodes can already work with the modern phones. Uh, but we are intending to enhance the processing power. I don't know the exact specs on that. Is there uh, Chris or Brian, do you have any more uh, details on the, oh, yeah. the we specs? Can, we for can the definitely for the, process the uh, at the higher memory levels. Um, like ramping up battery capacity, um, you know, processing power, yeah. all those this, things. To uh, make it by the way, that's like a, a great question. Bomb. This this device will be one of your best devices. It'll have maximum memory. It'll have the latest 5G chip on it. So it'll run like lightning speed. You can play games on it. The beauty of that is, especially with, with DAG, because they have the layer zero protocol, is it just looks like a node on the network. It literally can take a transaction at a time and process it. And because of the proof of reputable observation, it'll it'll be known by the network. And anything that it passes in, it can validate. And it can take, you can at nighttime when you're sleeping, you can just turn it on, let it sit there by your bed, and it'll process transactions all night. And when you wake up in the morning, you can set a window of time and, and start using it for your work and you know uh, Facebook and other things that you want to do. And it can still process during the day as you see fit in the background while you're doing other tasks. And Brian, are you, you're going to be getting paid to process, uh, you know, transactions and, you know, have the phone as a node, right? Are you getting paid in the, the BioFi token or are you getting paid in the DAG ecosystem token? So the goal on that is to be able to actually create as much processing power as I can within that node and give you as much access to as many different uh, utilities or different services as possible. You know, say just, you know, say hypothetically in the, the guards of your, your uh, a, uh, an insurance, uh, insurance uh, staking, you might, let's say, stake uh, $1,000 in BioFi, $1,000 in USDC, $1,000 in DAG. And that's actually acting as your collateralization for the service, and then that's also using as your your uh, your your uh, processing power at that same time, and potentially even liquidity depending on the what the contract looks like. But you're able to actually so depending on I never want to sell BioFi, so I'm trying to get as many things that I can get paid out in you know other tokens. I'm a really big a big fan of basket yields, and potentially in the the regards of with um, like with uh, the micro bonds for example. Uh, let's say that we had a basket that, you know, BioFi was working with and it was uh, 2023 roads and it's, uh, you know, a basket of bonds that has, you know, seven different uh, states uh, road projects and you're staking BioFi and you're potentially yielding uh, m multiple or you're potentially re being rewarded in uh, multiple different bond payouts or other different uh, token rewards or, you know, I really, really like the, the, the bond, uh, the bond pay or excuse me, the basket payouts. And I'm going to do everything I can to get as many of those as possible. Awesome. Kat, did you have any question? Yeah, just one last question was, other than with DAG, do you plan to have any other partnerships? Oh, absolutely. Uh, or your Phoenix phone? We'll have multiple companies that interact with it. The beauty of the phone itself is it can be sold to companies that just need a very secure device. So IBM is an example. Uh, let's say that they want to buy it for all of their salespeople, all of their international salespeople. Uh, they could do that. Um, one thing, Kat, too, and your, your questions are very good, by the way. One one thing that uh, one uh, of our partners is called Zarya, and this is a very famous company in the SIM market. So they have an ability to uh, provide secure SIM technology for a device. So wherever that device travels, let's say IBM salespeople are going to South America or they're going to Southeast Asia or Europe, uh, you can take that SIM in the phone and it'll connect up to whatever local network is operating in its range. So basically anywhere you are on earth, you can connect up and communicate securely. So that being said, partnerships will be not just like nodes, but with actual companies who need secure devices. You could also, uh, also anything that we, you know, want to bake into the app or excuse me, into the phone as far as applications, 
like let's say or for you know the you know safe box or the password manager or potentially the governor dow uh, for, you know proof of existence voting model or any you know any app that you know you might come up with that might be involved with our ecosystem if it's you know we could bake that into the phone anything that you want you know that we want to put into the phone ourselves would be ecosystem partners or anybody that you know uh, is a provider that's awesome, guys. I'm, I'm really excited about everything that you guys are doing. And, and I definitely have some ideas actually in the healthcare space that you might be able to bake into the phone, but that's neither here nor there. But thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Send those ideas, Kat, please. You know, you yeah, we're have... definitely working that direction. Oh man, you guys could, you guys can work in so many directions here. I think this is going to get kind of crazy quick, quickly. Um, uh, but great questions, Kat. Thank you for adding so much value to the AMA here. Um, Maury, what's your question for the team? All right, we just gotta figure out how to unmute you, my friend. Uh, why don't we try DZ while we're waiting on Maury. DZ, do you have a question for the team? Uh, yeah, man, look, I'm already sold. I don't even <laughs> wanna ask questions. The only question is, where the hell is your Discord? I'm trying to find more info on you guys and, and join up and, and get with the community. I can't find shit. Can you help me out? <laughs> okay, well, let me send something right now. Please, man, I've been asking in that chat, no one's answering me. I'm trying to go, go, go. All right, DZ, we'll, we'll get you hooked up. Uh, Brian, if you want to send me the link, I'll, I'll post it in the general chat and, and Super Bowl chat for everybody so they can join up. Oh, one, one last question. Uh, actually, one more. Um, okay, are you DZ. guys doing any collaborations with uh, influencers or actors or anything like that? Are you willing to uh, do absolutely. anything? Absolutely. That that's a fact. Yeah, that, that... I think that's what they're doing now, isn't it? Yeah. We're, we're we're here with robert uh we're you know we're, we're, we like to work with the friends of our friends so okay um, well uh, uh I would, all right great i'd love to work with you guys i'm an actor on tv and I'm yeah let's do it. on the internet if you guys want to exchange info let's do it all right DZ. sounds good sounds brother. Good. Yeah, anything you can do to help out the project man so reach out to uh brian here he's, he's one of the best people i know uh you know just just a very sound mind in the space uh, and then you know guys link up and, and work on that um, Maury, did you get your mic figured out? I want to get you your question if we can. It's okay, man. You know, uh, maybe maybe send me over the question or send Brian over the question and we can get it answered. I know sometimes we have mic problems, but um, guys, I mean, just incredible what you guys have built. I mean, this, you know, usually I'm sitting in an AMA and I'm like, man, how am I going to carry the next half an hour worth of questions? Because there's really not a lot to talk about. But with you guys, I mean, I feel like we could spend another hour here just going over, you know, so much more of what you guys have built. Um, is there anything that you guys would like to share before we end today? Anything else that we, we should know about before uh, we, you know, we get out of here? This is a long time coming. Yeah. I, and we're very I, excited. I just want to say thanks, Robert. No, I, that's, you that's, know, what you do is fantastic baby. and your community is amazing. And we just look forward to coming back again and talking to your community and really appreciate everything you do. Thank you, man. Oh. It's, it, you hey, know, if I can hey. jump in, this is Chris yeah. again. Sorry, sorry to be to have to, to to resort to be the pitch man again. Did we tell the folks about the Gleam campaign that's going on? We I did was not. offline for a couple minutes. Okay. No, pitch it to us, Chris. Pitch it to us. <laughs> okay, well, folks, there is a Gleam campaign. We'll see if we can drop the link in here. Uh, but certainly, if you take a look at uh, um, at Pinavon on on Twitter or BioFi Community on Telegram. We have a Gleam campaign going on. We're trying to build our followers and build our communication channels. So you can you can win your share of ten thousand dollars in BioFi. Wow. So it's easy. Everyone who participates will get at least one BioFi, and that that the reason for that is you can get into the ecosystem. That's all you need to get into the ecosystem. It's just one BioFi once the ecosystem is up and launched and the UI is up. So make sure you follow. Make sure you uh, complete that that campaign. And um, get your shot at ten thousand at up to ten thousand in uh, in BioFi. Yeah, share that stuff with me, Brian, if you can, and I'll share it with the community because I know there's a lot of people that would love to participate in that. Um, any anything else that you guys would like to say before we close out here? I think it's good. Thanks everybody for being yeah, here. That's big thank nice you. To see everybody hang out the whole time. Yeah, guys, it's really an honor to speak with you. I mean, uh, th this is kind of a job that I didn't really expect to have, you know, uh, 12 months ago or 18 months ago. Uh, but to be sitting here and talking with, um, you know, some of these 
most amazing teams and projects that are going to really reshape the next five to 10 years of, of, of digital digital assets and crypto. It's, it's really, truly an honor to speak with you guys and to, to learn more and to just get that knowledge that you guys are sharing. And you guys are just truly incredible, incredible projects. I really appreciate Thanks, that. Guys. Thank you so much. You too. All Thanks, right, everybody. A pleasure. You guys have a great